Welcome to another message from C3 Mumbai. For more information about C3 Mumbai, please visit our website c3mumbai.com or visit our Facebook page. The title of this sermon this evening is um, is stop going to church. Stop going to church. Stop going to church. Uh, look at the person next to you and say, stop going to church. Come on, I dare you to do it. You feel bad, don't you? But it'll feel fun because it's kind of naughty. Stop going to church. You know, the crazy and interesting thing about Jesus is he didn't go to church, but he built the church. And uh, the other thing is, is that he never told his disciples, hey, listen, since you're followers of mine, you should go to church. He never said that. Um, but what he called them to was to build the church. It's a difference. He called them to build the church. And uh, we, we as uh, the church, as God's people, sometimes this gets a little bit overlooked. And, and, and I know that we, within this church, we get a lot of people that come and go, seekers, seekers, people who are seeking out Christ. Um, one of the things that... that people can kind of tend to miss when they come is they think that church is just a place that you come to and get your blessing, get your darshan, get your thing, and then go. But who knows that church isn't that? Church is actually who you are. When we, when we, actu- when we become believers, when we become followers of Jesus, we actually become a part of His body, which is the ecclesia, which is the church. And... Uh, that means that we all have a part to play in it. That means we all have something to do in the church. And it's also, it means that our calling is tied up within our church. Now, when I say church, I'm talking about the relationships. A part of that structure is, 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 um, is the leadership, but it's way more than just the leadership, than just the leadership of Rachel and I and those who we're raising up to lead as well. It's way more than that. It's the relationships. So I want to show you some scriptures and I want to kind of talk through some, some things and show you how this kind of works within the kingdom of God. The first um, scripture that I want to teach out of is uh, Matthew, the, what's this first scripture on my thing? Matthew chapter 16, yeah, man, Matthew chapter 16. Thirteen. I'm going to read this to you and then explain to you what's going on. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? This is him asking his disciples. Simon Peter asked or answered, who's one of the disciples, you are the Messiah. You're the Son of God, or Son of the living God. And Jesus replied this. He said, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you, now I want you to hear this, okay? So, so Peter has this revelation. He's like, you're the Son of God. I realize you're the Messiah. You're the one. You're the one. You're it. You're the one that all of these prophecies have been talking about over the thousands of years prior to this. You're it. I know you're the one. And Jesus says, yes, Simon, that's true. God's revealed this to you, but he doesn't leave it there. He takes it further. He takes it further to Simon, and I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Let's just stop there. Well, actually, let's read on. Verse 19. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. And I tell you, Simon or Peter, that on this rock I will build my church. See, you can see this. I want you to see this. In the realization of Christ, Simon Peter received his calling. And you've got to understand something about this. His calling 
was to what? To be that rock on which Christ would build the church. You know what? For us, for you and I, in our revelation of Christ, as we see Jesus, He's going to call us to build the church. It's intertwined. It's interlocked. A lot of people don't get this. They, they, they want to go to church. They want to go to church. Maybe this morning, maybe tonight, I'll go to church. Mm, but I've got, a, oh, I've got a dinner on. I've got this on. This, oh, there's this option. I was on book my show and maybe I could go to this thing or whatever. Okay? Maybe I'll go to church. No, that, that, isn't, that isn't the correct mindset. The correct mindset is, I am the church. I build the church. And, and a lot of people, they'll see Christ, but not hear the calling to build. They'll see Christ, and they'll not, not hear the calling, that He is calling us to be that rock on which He will build the church. And I believe it's why the church, in some ways and shapes and forms, sometimes doesn't ever go to where it could go, because there's just not enough people around there's not enough workers who are prepared to build it's oh it's just the pastor it's the ministry team it's no it's not the pastor it's us it's us who have called to build peter in his realization of christ wasn't just a realization of christ it was a realization to build the church and i've heard people say that jesus never mentioned the church but that is him speaking saying i will build my church through whom people through human beings whom He has revealed Himself to. Has Christ revealed Himself to you? He has, right? As He reveals Himself to you and I, He is also calling us to build. The reason um, I want to talk about this really today was to kind of preach into what we're doing this Friday night. This Friday night, we are doing the volunteer party, the volunteer dinner. Why are we doing this? To celebrate people who have gotten and understood the fact that they are building the church, not going to church. Building the church, not going to church. We want to celebrate and have a gigantic party every year to celebrate those who have gone, I don't just go to church, I don't just attend church, I don't just, I am the church. My, my dad had a saying, that he used to always make me say, if it's going to be, it's, it's up to me. If it's going to be, it's up to me. You know, if the church is going to be, it's up to us to build, to realize that our calling is intertwined and our, our future is intertwined into the community that we build as a, as a, as a group of believers. Okay, so... Huh. A revelation is tied to a calling to build. How do I start to build? How do we start to build the church? The first step is to be planted. First step is to be planted. You know, in Psalm chapter 92, uh, this is most, I, I mean, I just love this, this scripture. Psalm 92. Um, let me turn to it. Psalm 90, 89. There we are. There we are. We're good. We're good. Psalm 92. In verse 12, talks about being planted. It says, the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord. Everybody say, planted. 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 There's not so many of you, so you need to speak louder so I can. <laughs> planted, that's it. In the house of the Lord. They will flourish. Everybody say, flourish. flourish. In the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. Now, there's a good one for you. Okay, Jacob, you're still a young man. But when you get old and gravity starts to have its toll, <laughs> it starts making everything, you'll still be flourishing. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no wickedness in him. This is, a, this is actually a potential life changer. I reckon if someone in the room tonight, which I'm sure you guys would, 
because you're those kind of people, applies this. I, I reckon 10 years from now, you're going to look back and say, you know what, I got planted. And I can see that I have flourished as a result of being planted in the house of God. Because I've understood something, Ryan. I've understood that I am not going to church. I have understood that I am the church, that it's something that I must get into. I need to put my roots down. I need to dig in. I need to stick around to see. We, we, you know, in the church we have, as a pastor, I get a lot of people asking me to pray for them. And you know what? I love to pray for people. I love to minister to people. Sometimes I, I come across people who ask me to pray for them and they say things like, you know, my marriage, um, not my marriage, but their marriage, my marriage is, is, is on the rocks. My kids aren't behaving. Uh, my work is going crazy. And, and they've come that Sunday specifically for prayer. And you know, my ministry to them is, yes, I will pray for you. But I'll always say, you know what? You should get planted in the house of God. Because coming here and having pastor wave his magic wand over you isn't going to really do much for you. It isn't really going to do much for you. What is going to actually help you is to be planted, is to get your roots down, to be the church, not just go to church, but to be the church. That's where God works. That's where flourishing happens. Uh, the rhythms of church, of being a part of it, being involved, helping build it, not coming as a consumer, but coming as a person who builds. That is the kind of person that's going to flourish in the house of God. They're going to see God at work. Okay, so we've got to stop going to church. God's highest calling was for us to never just go to church, but to flourish, to be a part of it. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon, planted in the house of God. They will flourish in the courts of our God. You know, the... the uh, the word flourish means to, to kind of to grow spiritually, to be strong, to have faith. The old bear fruit, to be fresh and green, to be successful, to be succeeding, to grow, to thrive, to prosper, to increase. These are the kind of the words that when you think of flourishing, they come to mind. Isn't that what we want? Isn't that where we want to be? In a place where we're flourishing. What's the opposite of this? You know, so often when I talk to these kind of people that haven't planted, yet they have met Christ and they've seen Him, they know He can do something. Often, instead of flourishing, they're spiritually dry. Often, instead of thriving, they're emotionally withering. Often, instead of being connected, they're relationally, relationally barren. Relationally barren. Who knows what I'm talking about? Oh, I don't know why this is happening. I don't know why that. Well, are you planted? Oh, no, I just need your prayers. No, you need more than prayer. You need to start making some decisions about where you're spending your time and where you're putting your roots down. Because it's only then that you'll actually begin to see how God actually works. You know, the cool thing about these two trees in, in that, that, uh, that um, the psalmist is talking about. Um, the first one, the first one uh, is, is cedar or a palm tree. No, ah, the cedar. The cedar, the cedar tree is one of the most durable trees in the world. It lasts. Solomon's temple, which was this crazy big temple that was built, uh, the most expensive thing ever built, and, um, he built it out of cedar. The beams were cedar. The columns, the roof was cedar. Why? Because they're durable, they're attractive, and cedar also smells great. Durable, attractive, smells fantastic. So the so the 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 kind of the the what's happening here? What the picture that the the the, the psalmist is trying to paint here is is those who are planted are going to be like these durable beams, these columns, these attractive, beautiful beams in the house of God, 
They're going to be strong. They're going to last. And then a palm, tree, a palm branch, that, what that symbolizes is, is triumph and victory. Who knows that when Jesus came into Jerusalem, the, what they waved and what they put down was palm trees because that was what you would do as an offering fit for a king. Okay? So uh, the Romans... You know, the Romans, when they, would, they started the Olympics, right, and they used to run around in the nude, they don't do that anymore, thank God. But, uh, but back then, if they won, what they would do is they would award them with what? Palm leaves. Because palm leaves would actually represent victory. The cool thing about both the palm tree and the cedar tree is also that they're both evergreens. They're not deciduous trees. They're always producing. They're always green. They're always working. They're always producing fruit. Isn't that cool? Those planted will be like the cedar, like the palms. Flourishing, flourishing, flourishing. Did you know your life is a seed. Your life is a seed. A seed has the potential. I, I love avocados. Anybody else like avocados? With avocados, I finish the avocado and I so love those avocados and because they're so expensive, I never know quite whether I should throw out the seed or not. Because it's such a large and substantial seed, but also I know the potential that seed has got. That seed has the potential to be a tree that produces avocados so I don't have to go to the shop and buy avocados anymore. That seed has the potential to grow, to multiply, to thrive, and to produce fruit. But you know what happens if I just leave that seed on the mantle peace and let it be it will be unfruitful it will be dormant it will be unproductive and it will become barren your life is a seed where you send where you spend your life where you spend your time what you put your roots down into that is what will bring about what god has for you and what has what you where your future lies it's a seed your time is a seed why do we get involved? Why do we do all of this serving? Why do we come to church every week to hear, this, to hear the preacher preach? Well, not really. It's to be planted. That's what it's about. I'm just, I'm just all, I, all I'm supposed to do is my job. You know what my job is? Is to just point. Oh, that's my job. You know, Moses, you know Moses in the Old Testament? He was just a good pointer. He's like, okay, God is saying go that way. That's it. And um, I don't have to say we're going that way. I, my finger is just pointing there at the Bible. That's my job every Sunday. That's my job, okay? But there's way more than going on within a community than just that. And I say community on purpose. A community is something that is intertwined, that is connected, that is working together. And a lot of people miss this about being planted, um, you know, Rachel uh, is um, a little more daring than I am. If I was to, um, if you were to ask me, listen, would you like to come and jump out of a plane with a parachute on your back with me today? I would say, nah, <laughs> no. Why would you jump out of a perfectly good plane? That would be the question I would ask of you, okay? But if you were to ask Rachel that question... She will go with you gladly. She will be dancing because she loves the, uh, the high or whatever. I don't know what it is that she loves about it, <laughs> but she loves it. And uh, in, a, in the l one of the times, one of our visits back, family visits back to Perth in Australia, just south of Perth, there's a, um, there's a forest uh, with these trees. They're called chewet trees. And these chewet trees are humongously tall. They're really, really tall. They're at least... I don't know what they are. Must be 50 foot, 100 foot tall. They are tall. Their their trunks are, are wide. In fact, there was one that had a trunk that you could fit a car in. It it, 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 had, it had kind of been hollowed out, and you could literally fit a car inside of it. 
and, and it's like huge and it's all the way up now these trees they have this part where in one of the, one or two of these trees they've put some steel pegs into the side of it all the way up to the top and up the very 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 top of this tree they built a tree house and the activity that you're supposed to do is climb this tree because it's really fun and um, go up to the thing. So I thought, well, I'm going to do this with Rachel. It's going to be so fun. I started climbing. I got up to about the roof height and I, my palms got sweaty and I got this shiver in my spine and my feet got wobbly and I thought, I can't do this. I'm not going to live. I could die. I know the risk that's going on here. I don't even know if these these pegs going into the side of the tree are, are safe. And Rachel's like climbing. She's above me. She's like, hey, you coming with you? What's going on, Ryan? I'm g-. And she just kept on going. I just climbed on down really slowly and really carefully because I just couldn't take it. I couldn't take it. <laughs> but you know, you take one of these trees, these Tuat trees, and I think the tallest trees in the world are probably in... Um, in the red, uh, in uh, the uh, the forest up in North America, um, the red, for- what are they called? The redwood trees. That's right, the redwood trees. Those trees are j- even taller. Um, but you take one of those trees and you go and take it out to a desert, or you take it out to a land where there's no other trees around. It doesn't matter what kind of tree it is. Alone, that tree, that tree, when the wind blows is not going to last. Even if it grows tall, it's just not going to last. See, what happens in a forest like the redwood forest or this tuat tree forest is these gigantic trees, what they, 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 their, their roots actually go so far out and so far down that they have the ability to hold themselves in the, in the storms. But the other thing that happens is as those roots go out, as there's a tree next to a tree, their roots begin to interlock. They interlock. And they're fixed in place together. You know, what? you could be, you could be a tuat tree. You could be a tree that is meant to be a giant. But if you're all alone, and if your roots aren't interlocked with somebody else's, within a community, within a church, this is what God meant it to be. You'll never actually be able to reach your full potential. You know, the devil wants to isolate people you know why he wants to isolate people he wants to isolate people so he can blow them over with the storms with the trials of life with the things that come to test us he wants to get you into a place where you're not talking about your sin where you're not talking about the things you're struggling with where you're not talking about uh, the real issues of life you're not being real at church you're just a high and buy at church and you're not really planted he wants to get you into that position because he knows that if he can get you there all he needs to do is give you a trial where the trial is strong enough, where you're alone enough, where you don't know anyone, you really don't have any true friends in church who actually love you as you are and accept you as you are so that he can blow on you like the big bad wolf comes and blows on your house. And the little piggy had built his house with straw and it gets blown away. That's, the, that's how the enemy works. And you've got to understand something. Church is meant to be a place, part of being planted is to have our roots intertwined with others to be locked in, not to be doing life alone and just coming and going to church. No, no, you don't go to church. You are the church. You are the church. Look at the person next to you. That is the church. We are meant to be together. And part of what builds togetherness, part of what builds the church growing together is just serving together, just getting involved doing something around the place here, being involved on one of the teams and just saying, okay, I'm here, I'm going to commit to this. And uh, it's blessed. Lives begin to flourish. Lives begin to flourish. People begin to see change. I, I grew up in Perth in Australia and I was... I, I've just seen this time and time again where people have gotten involved in church, in some shape, way, or form, and God just gets on it and blesses it. Uh, <laughs> I, I know that in Australia we had a cafe. We actually built this cafe in our church, and um, it, this was there was this fab. It was like it was like fashionable to have cafes in your church. So we had this full blown cafe, cappuccino machines, and you know the whole thing was going on in our church. And 
all of these young people, we, we got in this um, cappuccino specialist, this Italian guy who came in and did the training on how to make a cappuccino. <laughs> well, uh, I, I think that's French, but anyway. Uh, but, um, you know, all these kids got training, and we had this most amazing coffee at church. It was just really great. But all these kids ended up paying for, being able to pay for their university, their greater college things, because they had this skill, because they'd been involved at church. And I've seen this with all sorts of people who get involved in church and just say, you know what, I'm getting involved. I'm planning myself. I'm going to be a part of this, whether it be in media or in sound or in, I don't know, preaching, or whatever it is. God just gets on it and blesses it. And you find that it begins to open up doors. But a lot of people, sometimes they come into church and oh, no, I, I just need, to, I need the prayer, but I, I don't want to be... I don't want to be involved. I want to give my time. I, don't, I, don't, I need to be blessed, but oh, I don't know. I'm a bit busy. Don't be too busy. Get involved. That's where the gold is. That's where the growth is. That's where the thriving is. That's where God begins to really work. Because church is not something that we just come to. Church is not a place that you just go. Church is a place that you build. Church is a place that you actually are. It's your community. It's your family. It's your home where our roots get intertwined and over the years, over the years of serving together, seeing each other on, on Sunday and seeing each other at connect groups. When the testing comes, when the trials come, you've invested, you've put the seed in the soil, you've continued to put that seed and sow into the right soil so that when the storms come, and let me tell you, the storms come, that you've got a forest around you of other redwoods, of other tuat trees, other giants who've, who've, who've weathered the storms before with you and have grown with you and have gone through it all with you. And when the winds come, you stay true. You stay straight. You stay strong. You know, that's the way God meant it to be. That's what church is all about. That's why we get together and serve. That's why we get and get together and do this, come together every week. We come together to grow together for our roots to intertwine so that 4, 5, 15, 20 years from now you've got people who you've done life with in a way that you haven't done life with anybody else. Some, of, some people just do not understand the power of a local church and they don't understand how God works. God will always release what's on your life through someone else. He'll, uh, your future is always tied up in your relationship. It's always, so if, you, so if you're in a place of isolation, you don't really have any true friends in church because it's just, you're disconnected, all your friends are out there. It's okay, I understand. It's, I'm not saying you should cancel all your friendships outside of the church. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is it's really important to understand that God has probably brought you into this family for a reason. And you have to discover it. He, you have to begin to, and how do you discover that? Week on, week in, week on, week in. Serving, being planted in the house of God, letting the roots go down. And at some point in time, you'll realize, you know what? These people, this community that I'm planted in is the most important thing I've got. That's, what, that's the way God meant it to be. Because it's, it's, it, it, that's what actually will cause you to flourish. Now, I think in this day and age, we have a lot of individualistic kind of talk going on where it's uh, you just become who you kind of personify, who you want to be and just profess it and just proclaim it and just say all the right things. And People are more depressed now than they ever have been in their lives. People are more lonely than they ever have been in their lives. It, it's becoming more and more of a problem. I think the church has the answer. But it only has the answer as we plant ourselves and actually commit to being planted in the house of God. And we have true relationships. I'm telling you, it is the most powerful thing. It's more powerful than, you know, having fancy lights and subwoofers and a black ceiling. Although I do like all of those <laughs> things. They're really cool. That's not what's going to build the church. You know what's going to build this church? Is us. Realizing something. 
realizing that we've met Christ and that our calling is to build his church. To plant ourselves and say, you know what? I'm going to build this thing. I'm going to build it. I'm going to walk across the room. When I see a new person, I'm going to walk across the room. I'm going to introduce themselves. I'm not... I'm just going to wait. I'm not going to go and talk to my friend who I always talk to my friend about all of my problems. I'm not going to, I'm going to bring this person in. I'm going to invite. I'm not going to leave it all up to Canal to do all the coffees and everything. I'm going to get involved. I'm, you know, not going to leave it up to uh, somebody else to put out the chairs. I'm going to, I'm not going to leave it up to someone else to make, you know, make sure that there's no tissues all over the floor in the bathrooms. I'm going to pick them up because this is my church. This is who I am. This is me. I'm intertwined. My roots are down. That's the person that will thrive in the house of God. So it's a bit of a challenge and it's a bit of a why as to why we are doing this celebration this Friday night with the volunteers because we are celebrating what it is to be planted. We are celebrating what it is to go about and just be planted in the house of God to thrive. C3 Mumbai is a church in the heart of India's commercial capital where a diverse group of people brought together to worship God and to pass on the hope of salvation by grace that we freely received. For more information about C3 Mumbai, please visit our website c3mumbai.com or visit our Facebook page. Follow us on Instagram or tweet us on our handle at C3 Mumbai. Hey, it's Ryan here. If you enjoyed this message and you live in Mumbai, we would love to meet you in person. Why don't you come along 11.30 a.m. Studio 10 at Famous Studios in Mahalakshmi.